good to see everybody back in the house of God tonight. Of course, a lot of us, we've already been here, but it's good to see those that have come in on the, on the, latter, the latter wind there. Let's all stand. We're going to sing all five verses. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. We'll sing that to start the service tonight. You sing all five of them, okay? All right, you sing the first. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. singing to start a service. I'm going to ask Brother Richard Guidi uh, to open us up in a word of prayer, please, sir. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. It is good to see everyone here tonight. We do want to say thank you for everyone who was able to come out for the play practice. And we went through it twice tonight. We got all the way through it twice. So only two more weeks until we actually are able to uh, present that play to everyone, to the public. And I'm looking forward to that. And again, we appreciate everyone who has certainly been involved with it. Um, after the Christmas play, in two weeks, we are going to have a time of fellowship. And Mrs. Grant, will it be in the Family Life Center or in the Fellowship Hall? It will be in the Family Life Center. I forgot to ask that earlier, but we are going to have a meal after that. Um, right, be right after the play. Um, everyone is asked to please bring desserts and sides and drinks. And if you can, please bring extra because we are expecting a lot of guests that evening and, of course, our own assembly. So if you are able to bring some extra on that, I would certainly be appreciated. And again, that will be right after the Christmas play two weeks from tonight. Um, there is going to be a, not a lunch and learn, there's going to be a breakfast and learn on Saturday, December 16th at 9 o'clock here at the church for the young ladies, grades 6 through 8. And uh, once again, there is a sign-up sheet. Uh, you can ask Miss Jennifer or, Al or Allie. Um, Conway made a statement tonight that I thought was quite humorous. He said, <laughs> he said, we need a sign-up sheet for sign-up sheets. <laughs> so he's going to create a sign-up <laughs> sheet for sign-up sheets. And uh, he's really not going to do that, but I thought that was quite funny when he said it. Um, also, too, there is going to be a ladies' Christmas party on Monday, December 11th. That will be at 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Again, there's a sign-up sheet. <laughs> Please bring a wrapped ornament. And uh, so if you're ladies, and that is for all the ladies, it's not just for the ladies' Sunday school class, but it's for all the ladies of the church. Again, that will be on Monday, December 11th at 6.30, right here in the Fellowship Hall. 
And um, I asked Mrs. Durant earlier if there were any more flyers for the Christmas gift play. She said that we do not have any, but she said that uh, we'll have some more on Wednesday coming up. So we still have a, a few weeks before that happens. And uh, if you want to give some of those out, invite people. I've invited a couple of people myself. And it's a good time to present the gospel. To, because if you think about it, there are some people who go to church twice a year. They go to church at Christmas and they go to church at Easter. And so you have two distinct opportunities to present the gospel. And I think that the play that is going to be presented is going to do just that in a very good way. So we want to encourage you to have some, uh, pick some of those up on Wednesday when she has more that she's going to be bringing. And then we will be able to move forward as we approach the time for the play. We will have a time of fellowship now. If you do have an offering, you can bring it to one of the boxes. So everyone stand, shake hands, and welcome everyone to the service tonight. As you return to your seats, all who are able remain standing. We'll sing all four verses. 436, Angels from the Realms of Glory. We'll have a special solo after this song, after the fourth verse. All four verses, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Jesus Christ, and if we have faith in him, we don't have to worry, do we? That's the great thing about it. All right, I got a card here. We had a missionary staying down in our rooms, I think, just last night, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he, uh, whenever they were leaving this morning, had a flat tire. They really did. They had a flat tire. And um, uh, I think somebody came up and told, of course, he came in and uh, asked if he had a pump out there, a compressor. But anyhow, he said, Zion Hill Baptist Church, thank you for the comfortable stay and many exciting things to do inside the missions department. Thank you also for helping us with the flat tire and allowing us to use the church van. We filled up the gas as on our way to saying, as our way of saying thanks. The Wilt family, church planters in New York City. And uh, they did use the van, and Brother Rod, he took the tire off and took it up here and had it fixed for him this afternoon. And I appreciate men like that that will take the time to help someone else and go with it. And um, hopefully, did he, did he put a patch in it or a plug? They patched it, so that's good. They patched it up there, so that's good. I do the easy way. I get a plug and put it in there, get them where they're going. Then don't forget these uh, cards here. And uh, for, I mean, listen, these are just great things you can give out at Christmas time. Got some on the table there. I think some on the table out back. Some back here, and I think I put some down here. So just grab some. We've got a 1,000 of them. Just hand them out. Get you a handful of them. Hand them out. Go to the restaurant. Go to Walmart. Go wherever. Go to your neighborhood. And just hand them out. It just says Merry Christmas, all of our information on the church, and a quick uh, message of salvation on the back, how to be saved. So if you can, get some of these. This is a good tool for this time of year, and I do appreciate it. All right, Brother Curtis is going to come, and we do appreciate Brother Curtis. Really do. And, uh, I, you know, we kid around with him a lot. And uh, I told him the other week, I've been trying to, about every week, put a picture about Friday or Saturday of our church, outside, inside, whatever, and inviting people to come. And then whenever we did that, uh, our 26th year, and I did that little video, that little PowerPoint presentation, I took a picture over here to the side of the men up here, the piano player and the men up here playing and all that. Curtis wasn't here. 
And I said, well, I can't put that up there. He was so slow getting from out there to up here. I already taken the picture. I'm just kidding now. <laughs> And, uh, I, I mean, I have, honestly, I have locked Curtis in the truck when we get out because I'm out and I'm going and I'm locking the doors. And I've locked him in the truck. And uh, he, sometimes he'll be running across the parking lot. He'll say, I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to be there. But we appreciate Brother Curtis, kid around with him a lot. But we love him, and I appreciate his faithfulness and his loyalty to Zion Hill Baptist Church. Lord, we, Curtis, come and holler at us for a little bit, okay? We yeah. Yes, sir. I turned it on. I just couldn't wait till the service started, though. I'd forget it for sure. I appreciate Zion Hill Baptist Church letting us be here, letting us stay for the time that we've stayed in the missions conferences and in the mission suites down there. And during the time of COVID, I didn't have to be locked up and locked in. I had. 18 plus acres over there to go to that I could get out in it. But I'm thankful that y'all allowed us last night, my family, uh, my, my grandmother, my Minnie's family, uh, cousins of mine used the room, used the building down here, the gym last night for the normal uh, Christmas party that we had. And thankful for Sister Debbie and Brother Ron and Sister Fran for helping us set up the decorations down there so they would look good. Mine would be all kind of twisted if I was doing it myself. But thank you all. I'm glad for Zion Hill Baptist Church. And appreciate what it means to us and being a part of it all these years. We're going to go into Luke. My pastor asked something and said something about an angel this morning that I was looking at. And we were thinking on the lines of a Christmas time, a Christmas message. But the only thing bad about it, I'm going to start off and pastor has to preach around my message the rest of the month. Through the end of the year, it would have been better if I had come at the last of the month. So I could just left that off and say he preached all I knew about it. So. But this is in Luke chapter 1, in 20, verses 26 through 28, 38, should I say, better said. It's the story of where Gabriel came to Mary. And I hope we don't get lost into thinking a lot about Mary. But we can see our Lord even more than that. But we will talk about each one of those three characters, Gabriel, and also Mary, and also the Lord. I think he's the most important one as it is. But if y'all bear with me, I'm going to start at 26 and read down through 38. You just follow me in, in the scriptures. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born in thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, 
She has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now let's pray at this time, please. Father, we bow to thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the portion of scripture that we read. We thank you for this time of the year that we have here to remember the birth of our lovely Lord Jesus. Pray, Father, that you'd help me help your people. Help me to say what I need to say to help them. Help your people in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, I've always been one in Chile not to be apt to preach during a certain time of the year for an Easter or for Christmas or other times during the year, special messages. But I sort of wanted to do this tonight to talk about this one thing that Mary done in this verse is here. In our text, we read about the angel Gabriel and Mary. Then we hear about what, he's, what Gabriel said about the Lord. Gabriel was a special message of God and messenger of God in verse 26. God sent him to speak to Daniel. When I was studying this, I said, where else could I find him at? And I found Gabriel in the time of Daniel talking. Wow, he had a long life, didn't he? <laughs> Lived many years, this Gabriel. That's because he's an angel, he's eternal. But in Daniel chapter 8, verse 16, and not chapter 9 and verse 21, 21, then we find him talking to Zachary, Zacharias in Luke chapter 1 and verse 19, and to Mary in verses 26 through 27. He was talking to them a special message that he gave to them. Gabriel told Daniel of the ram and the he goat, what that vision that he had, that dream that Daniel had represented. The ram was the Medes and Persians had two horns. One was bigger than the other one. And the he goat with the one horn was Greek or Greece and also uh, Ale Alexander. And then while they was looking at that, that goat had destroyed the ram. Then later that horn, that one horn fell off and four come up. And that was the kingdom being divided in that time in the Grecian Empire, the Greek Empire. And then in the text we see Mary. And I want to say something here that I haven't heard too many people in my life say. But Thayer said it in his, in his book that it, her name is Their Rebellion. You say, what, good, what does that have to do with us? Well, I was living in a country, in two countries for 22 and a half years where the majority of the people thought that Mary was above the Lord Jesus. That she was better than them. And that she was something special to have Jesus, the perfect man that he was. But that's not the way it is. Mary was just like any other lady in this world. She was human. Not a God, nor the mother of God, just a young virgin Jewish girl. Are you listening? Just, she was not perfect, just forgiven. Amen? And that makes us perfect in the sight of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Forgiven and chosen for her virginity, if that makes you blush, excuse me, but that's why she was chosen. And she loved the Lord God. She was a special young Jewish girl. She was dedicated to the Lord. You find a young, you find a young person that's dedicated to this world, God's not going to speak to that person except maybe in salvation. But she was dedicated, therefore the Lord chose her. Let me give a warning, okay? A warning in these verses. Imagine with me if what they said was true in their speculation that Mary was raped by a Roman soldier. It's not true. If she had been raped by a Roman soldier, she would have never received this salutation of Gabriel. God would have never sent him to her. If she would have had relations with another man, God would have never sent this angel to her to talk to her. 
And that's a warning is a lot of times we think that sin will not hurt us. But I want to tell you and to proclaim tonight that sin in our lives do or does hurt us. God may be about to call you to do something special, but you got a sin in your life that he's been dealing with you about and you will not get rid of it. He may just say, I'll pass over you to somebody else. Mary would have never received this salutation from Gabriel that night if she would have been involved in some way with a man. Can I tell you that? Mary listened to Gabriel and the list of things that he said to her. Look, in verse number 28, where did my verse go? Okay, let me get back over here to 28. In verse number 28, And the angel came in to her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. He spoke to her in this way, and couldn't you imagine her hearing those words? Thou art highly favored. Gabriel said to Daniel in the verses I mentioned earlier that he was beloved. God said, that angel said about Daniel that he was beloved of God. Can you imagine hearing God say that to you? Can you imagine she heard it highly favored? God gives those who walk with him special blessings. Are you listening? Give it to him. And then he said, the Lord is with thee. He is. This he has promised to each believer forever. You know, I can say here and stand before us tonight in the church that God has promised to be with us forever. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said, I'll go with you even unto the end of the world. Chile, Chile claims himself to be the end of the world. And let me say this, in the desert there in Chile, God was with him. I think that time that guy hit me in the back with, a, with his frying pan one day because I wouldn't give him some money. I think he pulled out a knife to stab me and God left him with a, a frying pan in his hand. Right, let's go on. You, and then he said, also the Lord is with thee. He's promised that. Blessed art thou among women. Okay? A lot of times we, we go through the scriptures, we read through them real fast, and we miss important things. When he said, blessed art thou among women, does not say above women. It says among, not above. Have you ever seen someone who thought they were above everyone else? They didn't make no mistakes. They knew it all. Mary didn't have anything like that in her life. She was among women. Yes, blessed because of what was fixing to happen in her life. Catholics teach that Mary is above even Christ. They'll have their pictures a lot of times, pictures a lot of times, their paintings where Christ is here looking up to Mary on a throne. No, Mary's not on a throne. She's at the feet of Jesus on the throne of God. He's on the throne of God. Amen. Mary was troubled. Could you imagine how much she was troubled that night? Well, see, God hadn't spoken to Israel for 400 years. Then here, all of a sudden, God is speaking to Zechariah through through Gabriel. And now, six months later, to Mary. Wow, God has been quiet. Now he spoke to Zacharias and said, there's going to be a son. His, own, his son, not God, but Zachariah's son. And they had him. And now this is coming to her. Wow. Let me say this. They probably thought a little bit, what is God fixing to do? The fullness of time, God sent forth his son to be born of a woman. Amen. At the right time in the history of man, he came. I'm glad for that. I'm glad I got to hear about him. 
Church is closing the doors. We need to keep them open and let the gospel be preached out of it again. Amen. Let me jump on ahead. Maybe she thought on this. You're going to have a son. Maybe she said, who's going to believe me? Maybe she thought on this. Uh, for this, I will suffer from then on. Come into her mind, she says, if this happens, it's going to cause her suffer. Then, he said, then she said, what will my parents think? Because this has never been done. Never, they've never read in Isaiah, behold, a virgin shall conceive. They would have said, oh, she's lying to us. Joseph, what would he think, she said. But we know what Joseph thinks. He's going to put her away private. So she was thinking on that. And let me say this. You must count the cost before you build to make sure you can pay the price. Say, so why are you saying that? Well, the topic of this message was surrender at Christmas time. Surrender. And you, to surrender, you must count the cost. And some of those costs may be to where you've never thought of it. When, my, when our daughter was going to Wales, I told her, says, when we... When the Lord gets us all in heaven, we'll be able to sit down and enjoy this life that we missed. And I was okay, but now there's something that, uh, that bothers me. My grandkids and my great-grandkids, I'm not going to see them. I don't know that this last time that Brianna and Andy was here, will be the only time I see them from now on. But you know what I have to do? I say, okay, God, I surrender. I surrendered to be a missionary. They did too, so I have to surrender in that each and every day. Amen. Are you listening to me? Surrender your will to the Lord. You have to count the cost. Let's, let's go to Luke chapter 14. Hold your place right here in chapter 1. Go to Luke chapter 14. Then we'll go to Acts for a minute. Luke chapter 14, verses 28 through 30. Let me get rid of this thing. Chapter 14, 28 through 30. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he had laid the foundation, and is not able to finish, finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish it. Here in these verses we see that when we count the cost of our surrendered life, we find out that we have to say, this could happen, but I'm surrendering to God's will. Amen. The old song is that was sang years ago, take my houses and lands, change all my dreams and my plans, for I'm placing my whole life in your hand. Can I say that my wife and I have given up several different houses? Sold out everything several different times. We done it when we went to Costa Rica. We got rid of our stuff in Costa Rica. When we moved to Chile, we got a house and rented it and have moved out of it. Now we're back here. They'd sold all this stuff and brought some home. But the surrender is, it's a continual daily thing in our lives. Now, Acts chapter 20, please. Look what Paul says about his life. 
Acts chapter 20, verse 24. In these verses we find that he was a talking and the Holy Spirit, verse 23, save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. What did Paul say? But none of these things move me. Neither can I my life dear unto me, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. None of these things move me. That's a surrendered life. I can't, neither can I my life dear unto myself. Why? So that I might finish my course with joy. Mary that night heard the salutation. Found out what was going to take place in just a few minutes. We'll see it, okay? Let's move on in this. Verse number 30 in our text in Luke chapter 1. If you still have it with you. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Do you know what favor means? Yes. Good news. But it is the same word as grace. Noah, as Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord, Mary found grace, favor with God. Why? Because she loved him. She was dedicated to him. She had the grace of God already in her life. Verse number 31 in our text says, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Her ministry was going to be a heavy ministry for her because she was to give birth, not knowing a man, to the only begotten Son of God. And take care of him until he became an adult. That is, especially nowadays, that's a lifelong thing. They don't become adults at 20 years old now. They, a lot of them not even adults at 35 and 40 years old. But she had that. The ridicule, the shame that they would shame her. Remember one time... Jesus told them they were of the father of the devil. And he said, and they responded, we be not born of fornication. They was mocking him and his mom. Oh, he's just born of a woman that had fornication. She thought of that, but her ministry was to give birth to the only begotten son of God and to care for them. The price would be great. Surrendering your will to the Lord will change your life. You would think that some people that say, hey, uh, that brother surrendered to preach. They would be happy. Yeah, glory to God. But mm, but he done gone local. He done went off the deep end. But it will change your life. And it'll help you. Surrendering your will. Now verses 31 through 33 tells us about Jesus. Look what it says. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, fear not Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Pastor was reading in Isaiah this morning about what it says about the Lord. Him being the counsel, the mighty God, the everlasting father. 
Gabriel is saying here to her, listen, he shall be great. They say that Jesus never wrote a book, but thousands upon thousands have been written about him. Jesus never wrote a song, but there have been thousands and thousands of songs written about him. He shall be great. He called the Son of God. Can you imagine that? We serve the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Called the Son of God. Shall be, God shall give him the throne of David. Now listen, as far as I know, I've only been here 67 and a little more than 67 years. And I haven't seen the Lord sitting upon the throne of David. But God said that he shall give him the throne of David. Where was the throne of David at? In heaven? No. In Jerusalem. So God is going to give to Jesus the throne of David, his father. Then another thing, he shall reign over the house of Jacob. Not for just a short time. How long does it, how long, if you read the Old Testament, you find that the kings lived, some of them didn't live long at all. Some of them lived 40 years and reigned. But Christ will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Amen. Amen. That's a reality I'm looking forward to seeing. Amen. His kingdom shall have no end. I mentioned about the goat and the, the ram. Those were four world powers. Starting off with Rome, not Rome, but Babylon. Then it moved to the Medes and the Persians. Then it moved to Alexandra. Then it moved to Roman, the Rome. Over the end, the Rome, Rome was the beast that there really wasn't a beast to describe other than have teeth of iron that destroyed. But those kingdoms, as great as they were, ended. Boom. But the reign of Christ, the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, shall have no end. Amen. Mary's declaration in verse number 34. She had just been told, uh, you're going to have a baby. She's, what did she do? How is this possible? Mary was smart for her age, I guess. Of course, I don't know how old she was at that time. She could have been in her 20s. She could have been in her high teens. But she said, I know not a man. She understood what does that mean for us, her being a virgin? It means that no man had any part with the birth of Christ Jesus the Lord. It was all God. Amen. A man could never come up to her and say, that was my son, no. They'll have to do like we do today and say, no, that was God's son. God done it all. Verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that, therefore also that holy thing which shall be born in, of thee shall be called the Son of God. Are you still with me tonight? Amen. Amen. Gabriel said to Mary, that the Holy Ghost would come upon her and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And she conceived by a miracle of God. The holy thing was to be called the Son of God. Jesus is, is the Son of God. Amen. Gabriel tells of Elizabeth to sort of help Mary Six months into the pregnancy of John the Baptist, the angel spoke to Mary, said that about her. 
And then verse 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. We love that verse. Pastor, what was the promise of this building? That God, it is possible with God. And it is. And then verse number 38. This is where Mary, even though she was dedicated to the Lord, lived for the Lord, had surrendered to the Lord early in her life, for whatever the Lord wanted, she come down to this verse right here. And it says, and Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. You know what at this time Mary did? She had already counted the cost. She had already thought about what Joseph would do. She was a spouse to him, and he, in his mind, wanted to put her away. She thought about her parents. What are they going to say? But she came to this. In Mary, in complete surrender, knowing the cost she will have to pay, she surrendered to God's will even though the cost would be enormous. Finishing up tonight, there will be no regrets to the person who surrendered his life to Christ. There will be no retreats for that and no reserve for the man or the woman that says these words, Here am I, Lord. As Isaiah said in chapter 6, Hear my Lord, send me. Hear my Lord, I'll be what you want me to be. I give my life into your control. And it is a life commitment, but it is a die daily thing in our life. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 31, Paul said it was a daily decision for us to surrender. I die daily. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes. And Brother Sam coming down. Would you be willing would you count the cost and say, Lord, I'll surrender. I'll let you use me. Even if it's just helping kids. Even if it is just helping our pastor. Helping his wife. I surrender to your will. sounds play it softly and I was thinking about as brother Curtis was preaching there about surrender and every time someone in the Bible said Lord here am I you had Moses to say that you had Gideon say that Joshua Samuel but I believe when we do that we'll find that the Lord himself whenever I say here am I God will say to us as he did in Isaiah chapter 58 and verse number 9. He said, Thou shalt call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. And that's something whenever we surrender, here am I, Lord. God's going to come on the scene and say, Here I am.
And that's a great I am, the Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing that is. Thank you, Brother Curtis, for such a wonderful message. Father, thank you for your blessings for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for a young girl like Mary who is willing to endure all the hardships, all the criticism, all the things that she knew she knew she'd have to go through whenever she said, Here am I, the handmaid of the Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that she was a faithful girl and one that God could trust and God could use in her time to bring forth his son. Thank you for that kind of life. And we pray, Lord, that you help us here at Zion Hill Baptist Church to have the same dedication, same surrender that they would have. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Honestly, I was thinking whenever Brother Curtis was preaching, and I think of people in the Bible, Gideon, you know, he said, I'm the least of all. Paul said he was the least of all. Peter, of course, a fisherman, unlearned and ignorant that people tell us and all these things. But they surrendered to the Lord and God used them greatly, didn't he? And whenever Curtis read that portion that said, for with God, nothing is impossible. He can take a nothing. And honestly, me and Brother Curtis, we come from the same place. I lived on Brandon, I lived on Dorsey Avenue, I lived on the Creek Bank, and 123 is about behind our house. Had a back alley. A lot of people don't know what a back alley is. We had a back alley. And Curtis lived on 123, right behind our house on, in the back alley. He lived over on 123 on East Bridge Road. And uh, so I've known Curtis for a long time, and I can say this. God can take nothing and do something with them. I've watched WYFF4, we've got a... A, a, a broadcaster on there, Jane Robolo. Jane Robolo has done a lot of things about the upstate. Restaurants, the meal villages, and all those. They've done it and gone through it. And I try to watch them when it talks about the Chronicles. She does a program called Chronicles. And it's usually about an hour show on a special show they'll have on a certain night. And I was just thinking of then, I think I told Jane this. I said, you know what, Jane Robolo? I need to go talk to her and get Jane Robolo to go through Greenville, South Carolina, especially the mill villages, and find out how many missionaries God used around the world from a little place of a little mill hill, from a nobody, to God using them greatly. I could say Brother Curtis Couch in Chile, South America. Because of him, a lot of, men, a lot of people will be in heaven when we get there one day because of Curtis. I think of Jimmy Rose. He came from Mill Hill. He worked at the Brandon Mill. And Jimmy Rose... 50 years in Brazil, and what an impact he had in our area. A, uh, let's say a pioneer missionary in our area. And many churches have been started. When I was there in 1984, around 1986, I preached the homecoming services for one church in a city called Batatais that Jimmy has started. Listen, 84, 86, I believe I preached it. He has started 27 years prior to that, that church in the city of Batatais, Potato City. And so he, he, I mean, and, and listen, that church is still strong. Alchinopolis, little city, a mountain city, little city there. Alchinopolis, we was talking about the, the other day. And I'm telling you, Jane Robolo needs to go do this. You know why? Because somebody said, I surrender, Lord. I'll give you my all. I'll go wherever, and I'll do whatever. And boy, it, it, and, and, and whenever we say, with God, nothing shall be impossible, we think we can't do anything. But with a surrender life, when God puts his hand on that life and that family, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Thank you, Brother Curtis, for that tonight. And thank you for Mary, who was surrendered to the Lord and what he had happened to do. Lord bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night here at 7 o'clock. Shake hands, have fellowship before you leave.